Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, guys? Pastor Jim here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church. And thank you once again for inviting us into your living room or from wherever you're watching. We are just so grateful to have you a part of our church family. And if you happen to be watching through Facebook Live, would you take a moment and just type in the comment section where you are watching from today? It is so fun to be able to see what kind of a reach Atmosphere Church is having in the midst of the pandemic. And also, while you're on Facebook Live making comments, does anyone want to take a guess from where we are filming the message, the talk today? Anybody? Anybody want to take a guess? Five, four, three, two, one. Do we have a winner? How about Papa Elf's house at the North Pole? Yeah, so uh, if you know the movie Elf, you should recognize the set. So uh, we are just so uh, grateful for all the people that have uh, worked really hard to get our studio set up and ready for Christmas. And it is Christmas time, and we had a series in mind that we were going to do, but we pivoted just like so many other things that we've done in 2020. And so we decided we're going to wait till next year. But God really started processing uh, this whole season for me personally as a pastor. And I felt like we need to take this Christmas season to address the elephants, plural, in the room. Because, you know, before 2020, I'll be home for Christmas sounds so... Uh, just sentimental and, and just like cozy, you know, pictures of soldiers coming home from deployment, you know, college students returning home, visiting grandma and grandpa's house. But now the 2020 version of I'll Be Home for Christmas feels a little bit more like a house arrest, right? So we want to address some of these elephants in the room. Last week we talked about how COVID-19 in the season that we've been in has put some strain on some of our relationships, especially with family. And so if you missed last week's talk, we encourage you to go back and listen to it through our podcast. But this week, we want to look at an issue that all of us at some point in the last nine months during COVID-19 have struggled with, and that is the topic of loneliness. So we're going to jump in to the Bible today, we're going to look at one of God's greatest heroes of Scripture. His name is David, and we're going to look at one of his Psalms where we can read that just because you're a man of God doesn't mean you're immune to struggling with loneliness. So let me pray this. Father, I thank you for everybody that is tuning in. God, I believe that you have divinely sent some people here today to watch this talk because you want to speak to their hearts. So anoint me as your vessel. God, I pray that when we leave this time together, that we will know that we had a divine encounter with the living God. Thank you so much for being with us, for speaking through me, and for doing a great work in people's lives through Atmosphere Church. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You know, uh, when the pandemic first kind of broke loose in the middle of March. I have to admit that a couple weeks into it, I started struggling with loneliness. And, and I think most extroverts, and, and I'm like 
probably the supreme extrovert. Uh, an extrovert, for those of you that may not understand what an extrovert introvert is, an extrovert is a person that thrives in the crowd, thrives with a lot of people. An introvert is somebody that actually gets, you know, their energy sucked away in a crowd. They, they actually get energized by being more by themselves. And so the extroverts around the world, two, three weeks into this thing, started going crazy, including your pastor. Uh, you know, I, I was... I was in a dark place because I was just feeling so caught off from our church family. I was feeling so caught off uh, from so many other factors of life, except my family. We were living in this apartment in Camarillo, and all five of us were there, so we, we had everybody together, and and even though everyone was in this apartment, I, I just felt lonely. Uh, you know, I haven't done a meme in a long time, but uh, Kylie, my daughter, found this meme, and I could relate to this so well. Government, we need to shut everything down for 30 days. And here are the introverts going, what? And the extroverts are, oh man, that was me. And maybe that was you. But I will tell you, as this thing has prolonged itself and we went from, hey, just let's take 15 days to uh, slow the spread and flatten the curve to, hey, let's go a month to two months. And now we're into this thing nine months. Chances are, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, you have had a struggle in the season of loneliness. And we want to address this. You know, the media hasn't really talked a lot about the effects that COVID-19 has had on our mental health. I'm, I'm really glad that over the last couple of months, it's being more addressed openly by mainstream media. But I was reading this according to Cigna Medical Group's 2020 Loneliness Index. America's loneliness epidemic is getting worse with three in five adults at 61% reporting they are lonely. These results come against the backdrop of a rising mental health crisis in America with more than 46 million people living with mental illness here in the United States. Two weeks ago, the Washington Post uh, published an article I thought was so good addressing specifically loneliness in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. It says, since the coronavirus arrived, depression and anxiety in America have become rampant. Federal surveys show that 40% of Americans are now grappling with at least one mental health or drug-related problem. But young adults have been hit harder than any other age group with 75% struggling. Even more alarming, when the Centers for Disease Control, this is the CDC, this is the department that everybody is looking to in the midst of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, they recently asked young adults if they had thought about killing themselves in the past 30 days and check out what they found. One in four said they had. One in four young adults have had thoughts of suicide in the last 30 days. Social Pro recently did a survey of people ages 18 to 75, predominantly living in English-speaking countries, found that at least 20% of respondents from each age group polled were lonelier than usual as a result of coronavirus. Millennials were among the most likely age groups to feel lonely. 34% of millennials in the survey said they were always or often lonelier due to the pandemic. I was watching an interview on the Today Show, and it featured a, a lady named Tammy Roberg, and she was telling the story of how every week before the pandemic uh, swept across the world, she would visit her 98-year-old father at a full-time care facility. But when the pandemic hit uh, and all of the assisted living places and, and nursing homes shut down, she was cut off from being able to visit her dad. And so uh, he had a problem hearing, so the phone calls wouldn't really work. And uh, in May, uh, he actually contracted the coronavirus, or at least he tested positive for it without any symptoms. And so they moved him to an isolated wing of his uh, assisted living place. And shortly thereafter, 
they called Tammy, the, the nursing care facility, called her and said, your dad is failing. You need to come. We need to get you connected with him. Uh, he wasn't talking to anybody. He lost all kinds of weight. And four days later, he passed away. And this is what's troubling. His death certificate listed the cause of death as the progression of Alzheimer's disease and, quote, social isolation, failure to thrive related to COVID-19 restrictions, end quote. Social isolation was listed as the contributing cause of death for at least nine other Minnesotans, almost all long-term care residents from June to September, according to state death records. No deaths in the previous two years cited social isolation as a cause. So this is where we have to ask ourselves a really difficult question. Is the cure worse than the disease itself? And what is troubling is that statistically in research, we won't know until probably two years after the pandemic is over of just how much uh, this pandemic has taken a toll on our mental health, specifically the effects of loneliness upon our lives. But here's what I want to talk about, that the holidays, regardless of a pandemic, are notorious for making people feel lonely. It's because for some people, it's the first time they're celebrating Christmas without a loved one in their life. A husband or wife has died. Um, a, a sibling is, is no longer there. A divorce has happened. Uh, so the holidays tend to be a very lonely space for many people uh, just in general. And then you slap on a pandemic on top of that and you could see why so many people are suffering in this season that we're in. So at Christmas time, it's especially important that we talk about this. And loneliness is, is more than just a fact. It's a feeling. And you don't have to be alone to feel lonely. I gave my example of, of being in my squishy apartment, but I'll never forget this time in our Vegas church that Tara and I used to lead. And we were there at a concert. And I, I mean, the concert was sold out in our church. I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder. People were everywhere. And I remember seeing this lady from our church there at the concert. She had a smile on her face and the music is pumping and I'm walking through the crowd and, and I see her. We make eye contact. I go, hey, it's so good to see you. She's like, I'm so glad to be here. And we didn't talk very long. And then I left and then I see her the next day at church. And she comes up for prayer and says, Pastor, I need prayer because I'm struggling with loneliness. And I was, I was so taken back by that because I had just seen her the night before at a packed out concert, shoulder to shoulder, a room full of people. And it was really a, a woke moment for me as a pastor because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, just because somebody is in a crowd of people doesn't mean that they're feeling like they're connected to people, that there are people in the midst of a crowd that are feeling all alone and what they're going through. And even if you're a Christian, doesn't mean that you're immune to this. If you're a, a man or woman of God and you've been following him for a long time, doesn't mean that you will no longer have struggles of loneliness. I, I just gave you at the very uh, start of the talk, like my own struggle when this thing first broke out uh, of how I did it. But it seems like loneliness is amplified in the midst of trouble and adversity in our life. And so Psalm 25, David, the author of Psalm 25, is kind of letting us in his prayer journal. So he like, uh, the Psalms are really David's prayer journal. So he's talking to God and he's writing it down, which I am a big fan of myself. So writing down your prayers. And this is what he says in verse 16. He says, turn to me, and be gracious to me. So he's praying to God saying, turn to me, be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. So we tend to feel the most lonely when we're the most afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. So what do you do when you find a feeling inside of you that's trying to carry you away to a very dark, dark place. Well, scripturally, we are to give everything in our life to God, including our trouble, including our 
anxiety, including our feelings of loneliness, we're supposed to give it over to him. And so everybody gets hit with this loneliness to some degree, but there's a difference in getting hit with loneliness and getting knocked out by loneliness. And some of you are knocked down in a, in a state of loneliness and God is using this talk today to pick you back up. And some of you, you're just getting knocked around by it and God is gonna use this talk today to get you hitting back against the loneliness that is trying to hit on you. So I want to talk this morning about how to hit back when loneliness begins hitting you. How to hit back when loneliness begins to hit you. It's, it's a real quick three-point talk. So write these points down and I'm telling you it's going to help you to hit back against the loneliness that's trying to hit against your life. Write this down. Number one, get alone. I know when, when you see that point, it just seems so weird, right? Because loneliness, you know, it just seems like that the last thing you should do when you're feeling lonely is to get alone. It sounds counterintuitive, but for people of God, for followers of Jesus, getting alone with God is essential business for God to be able to help us to deal with the loneliness that we are all feeling. And this is where it's good for me to just kind of point out the difference of solitude in isolation. Solitude is an intentional getting away from all of the noise in your life so that you can better clarify what God is speaking into your life. Isolation is when you cut yourself off from everybody in life, including God, and you just kind of want to go hide. That's the, the main difference between solitude and isolation. But as we see in scripture, so many times, Jesus himself withdrew. He got himself into a place where he got alone, and it was when he would get alone that he would get the biggest downloads from heaven. Luke chapter 5, verse 16, we read about one of these incidences where Jesus gets by himself. He says, but Jesus often, look at that word, often withdrew to lonely places and he prayed. So he got alone and prayed. He got a hold of God. And I am convinced that God speaks the loudest to us when we're at our quietest. And so getting alone allows us to kind of quiet our life. Robert Foster, he wrote this brilliant book back in the late 70s called Celebration of Discipline. And I loved what he said about this idea of solitude, about getting alone. He said, quote, we have to learn to embrace solitude, not in order to be away from people, but in order to hear the divine whisper better. Because that's how God loves to speak to us. He loves speaking to us in a whisper. And so really the only way you're going to hear God clearly speak into your life is you allow your life to get really quiet and you will hear God's whisper. Now God speaks two things when we're getting alone with him. He's speaking two things. He's reminding us all the time of our identity in him. He's telling us who we are. And he's also clarifying who he is. He is the God that is greater than the trouble that's coming against your life. And when you get alone with God, those are the two main things he's speaking to us all the time. This is who you are in me, Jim. And this is who I am for you, Jim. And as you get into that place, man, wow, it can help completely uh, pull down any kind of overwhelming sensations you may be feeling in the trouble that you're experiencing. Let me give you another scripture that Jesus gave to his disciples. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. So Jesus is commanding us to come to him if we are to find rest for our souls, that there's something in getting alone with God that God is able to download something to us so that we can find rest. And what will happen is that we will not feel alone. Even though we're getting alone, when we get alone with God, we know that we're not alone because God's presence is confirmed to us in our aloneness with him. I call this the Emmanuel factor. The Emmanuel factor, and, 
And uh, if you know, want to know what I'm referring to, it's Christmas time, right? So Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates means God with us. The most repeated promise in our Bibles is that God is with us. But it's, it's one thing to know this intellectually. It's a whole nother thing to experience it personally. And when you're getting alone, you're giving God an opportunity to put himself on display for your life, that he is with you. It's not some kind of little Hallmark card, that it's real. And you will feel his presence with you the strongest when you are alone and it's just you and God. There's another scripture. Write this down. James 4 verse uh, 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now as people of faith, as followers of Jesus, the way that we get alone with God is mainly through two disciplines. One is reading the Bible. And the second discipline is a thing called prayer. And reading the Bible, it's interesting that um, researchers at the Center for Bible Engagement found that people who read the Bible four times or more a week are 30% less likely to struggle with loneliness. Isn't that wild? So they did the study and they found out that people that simply read their Bibles are lonely less. Why? Because God is fully present in their life and they feel the, the presence of God so that they know, hey, God is with me. And when God is letting his presence know, what is he saying? He's saying, here I am, I'm greater than the trouble, and here you are, this is who you are in me, this is your identity in me. And then the second part is prayer. Now, I, I have to say that we all know that we need to pray as people of faith, but why aren't we praying more? Why aren't we getting away and praying more? Because it's through our prayer time that God has given us clarity of things that we are most desperately trying to hear from God uh, about. Uh, one of the biggest memories I have of leading the Las Vegas church over the last 10 years is we started this 24-7 prayer ministry that we would roll out 40 days before Christmas. And so November 15th to Christmas Eve, we would have a room dedicated in the church that every hour on the hour, 24-7, there would be somebody in that prayer room praying. Now, they weren't praying specifically for the church or the nation. They were praying for themselves. They were just getting alone with God. And I, I will tell you, the first year that we did this, it was, it was wild to try to convince people to go into the prayer room for an hour. I had so many people talking to me going, Pastor, like, how do I do this? Like, I'm going to be done in like five minutes. And, and I told him, I said, trust me, we're, we're going for an hour. We're not going to break it down into the smaller slots. It's going to be one hour and we're going to, you know, put Bibles and, and books in there and worship music in there. And, and so we started kind of filling in the schedule, right? In the first week, we had honestly a hard time filling the schedule. But when I went in personally, it's like when I started praying and I started getting into the presence of God, an hour went by like that. You know, th we had a little doorbell system. And the next person showed up, they would press the doorbell. And it, I felt like I just started and ding dong, you know, the next person was there to pray. I was like, whoa, you know, I, I want to, I, I feel like I'm just getting started. Like the engine is just being revved up. Like I need another hour and another person would come in. Well, guess what? By the second week, the schedule was completely sold out. Like you could not get into the prayer. I went to schedule myself and it was filled. And I was like, what is the problem here? Like, why did it get filled so fast? And I found out that people were, were scheduling not just one hour. They were taking like three hours and five hours. They're filling up the, the schedule being prayer hogs. And I got frustrated, but at the same time, I got excited because like people were discovering that when you get alone with God and you get into the presence of God, wow, he starts doing amazing things. I honestly miss that prayer room, and this is one of the motivating factors I have for really getting a building here, because at, in a mobile church, it's, it's hard to get time like that, or a room set aside uh, like that, but we are going to do our 21 days of prayer. We're pretty pumped about that, so mark your calendar, save the date, because on January 3rd, baby, we are doing another 21 days of prayer, we're going to be doing it online for all of you watching through Atmosphere Live, every day we're going to be online doing this prayer time, but it's going to be January 3rd to uh, January 23rd, it's going to be awesome, 
and uh, we can't wait to have you a part of that, all right? So save the date for that. But that's get alone. Number two, and I'm going to go quickly in these next two points to get uh, us home here. Number two is get a crew. You know, I, I don't want to be redundant from what I talked about last week with relationships, but relationships is essential business for our lives, especially our lives in Christ. God never intended you to live your faith by yourself. This is why Jesus invented the church. The church isn't a man-made idea. This is an idea that came straight from Jesus himself. And so when we gather together with people and, and we start connecting with people that are moving their life toward God, incredible things happen. And now you have a safety net for your life. When you're going through trouble, you're not in that trouble by yourself. It's not just you and God. You have a crew that is going through the trouble with you. And that is so important. Everyone has a longing for belonging. So here's my question for you at our, that are watching from wherever you're watching from. Home, your car, maybe even at work. Who's your crew? If you were to discover something horrible today about your life, do you have like four people on speed dial besides your pastor, besides the, the Atmos phone? Do you, do you have people that you could call? So pray with me. You know, I saw this to be one of the most important things I ever did as a follower of Jesus. I struggled the first five years of my faith. I struggled because I didn't have a crew and we were moving back and forth from Oklahoma to California. But when I landed in a fully surrendered life in Christ, I made it a, um, a prerogative. I, I made it uh, uh, like a priority to make sure that I found some guys, especially that wanted to run with Jesus like I wanted to run with Jesus. And I, I would meet with them on a regular basis. And then when I became a pastor, I knew that I still needed that. Even though I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm still a man. So I need some bros around me. So I would do these bro studies. I've, I've done them for years and years and years. And I was just talking to a guy that was a part of a bro study that I did back in Bakersfield years ago. And, and he was calling me just doing a check-in with me this week. And, and isn't it cool that relationships like that, they last. Even though like we both have moved to different cities, uh, it, it's just so cool the... Um, the depth of relationship that was formed in, in those bro studies. And uh, he said, Jim, I want you to know that I'm so grateful that you put together that bro study. You invited me to it and that I, it's not just you in my life, but I have all these guys that are still active in my life. And that's so cool. So find your crew, find some people that, that you jive with and, th and that, that you connect with and you know, hopefully prayerfully they're in this church and that this is why life groups are, are such a, a big part of why or what we do here at the church and why we do them. Uh, we, we circle up and I know we're, we're coming out of one life group season and we're going into a new life group season, but I want to start prepping you right now that there's going to be a great reset for all of us in 2021. And one of the great resets is we want you to circle up with other believers and we're going to be doing some Zoom groups just for you guys that are part of Atmosphere Live. And we're excited that, that we're going to be offering those to you. But they're going to kick off in January. And we want you to be praying and thinking about that so that you can make time to circle up with other people for six to eight weeks come January and really help develop and find your crew. So that's uh, that. And uh, we're excited too. here locally. We're going to be doing a men's and women's conference on January the 9th called the Freedom Conferences. And we're going to be having guest speakers and we're going to be doing it outdoors. It's going to be awesome at Ranchos de los Palmas. And uh, we're going to be worship. It's going to be great. But the whole the, the whole reason we're doing these conferences is to help people circle up and, and give men, give women an opportunity to find a crew uh, that they can belong to, all right? So here's the third one, and that is get a mission. So we first get a loan, then we get a crew, and the third point is we get a mission. It's important that we have purpose in our lives, and one of the things about loneliness is it sends us into a deep dive of darkness when we kind of lose track of a purpose in our life. And I, I want to tell you, this world is full of mission assignments that God is waiting for us to fulfill. 
But you have to get a mission. You have to own it. You have to go out there. Astronauts that spend months in, uh, at the space station report a phenomenon they term as the third quarter effect. And so they are up, isolated, they're away from, you know, in confined spaces with just a couple of them. And they notice about halfway into their mission, or about three quarters of the way in the mission, that they get this thing where, where they just get so depleted and they, they get into a state of loneliness, even though they have people around them. They get, you know, irritable, aggravated at the other astronauts. And one of the, the ways that they have trained the astronauts to get through this third quarter effect is by reminding of themselves of mission to get themselves in mission make something your mission even if it's making the meal even if it's just doing a little task but make yourself a mission now that couldn't be more true for us as followers of jesus because he's given us a mission so we have to remind ourselves that we're all missionaries, not just that guy in Africa, not just that gal in Zimbabwe or, or you know, in India, that we're all called to be missionaries for God's kingdom. So what's our mission? What are we doing to help build God's kingdom? Well, I tell you, Jesus made it very clear to us, serve others, serve others. And when you go out and serve other people, you end up actually helping yourself get lifted up out of the loneliness that you're feeling again the first point was really sound counterintuitive and this point sounds counterintuitive possibly as well because you may be thinking to yourself well i'm in a pit of loneliness and it's somebody else's responsibility to come and lift me out of this pit in reality the bible declares to us the way out of the pit is actually going out to help somebody else out and by helping somebody else out we are going to lift ourselves out of the pit of loneliness we're going to get up after being knocked down by loneliness by actually getting up to help somebody else out in need proverbs 11:25 you guys have heard me say this and i i sound very redundant if you've been a part of our church community for a long time but this is one of those Proverbs that I can't say it enough because we all need to embrace this, but a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This is God's boomerang factor. Like he gives it away um, to those people that actually are willing to give their lives away. And you don't have to wait for a serve day. You don't have to wait, you know, to sign up for some nonprofit organization and, and go, you know, on a trip for two weeks or three months or whatever the case might be. Getting a mission is as simple as walking out your front door, knocking on your neighbor's door and say, hey, from a, you know, physical distance and mask on or whatever and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm available. Do you have any needs? In our community locally, there's a lot of seniors that, that just need to be checked up on. And you could actually transform somebody's entire week by just saying, hey, I'm checking in on you. But the flip side of that, by you checking in on somebody else is going to actually turn around and help you get out of your funk, whatever that funk of loneliness might be. So check on, literally go and check on your neighbor. That would be a great way to love your neighbors. There's something that could be done in your neighborhood. Uh, there was a, a house that was abandoned on our street. I saw weeds growing, and then I thought, gosh, you know, I don't live next door to this house, but um, sometimes we park our cars there. So I went on a Saturday. It only took me 10 minutes, but I weeded the whole thing and cleaned it all up. And I didn't think really much of it, but the neighbor that lived next door to this abandoned house said, hey, somebody told me that you cleaned up the house, and I'm just so grateful that you did that. And and I didn't think anything of it. It's just like by, by cleaning up this, this lot, really blessed another neighbor. Who knows? It, and it, do, it doesn't take a lot of effort whatsoever. Um, I have a new uh, fun thing I like to do is I, I have little scripture cards. And you don't need one from the church. Write some scriptures out. But I keep them in my car. And I'll leave them, like when I go to a gas station, I'll like slip it in where the, you know, the, the credit card is. So they have to pull it out. And like, what is this? And it's a scripture. It's some inspiring, encouraging scripture. But I have fun with it. I, I like, I'll, I'll go to the grocery store and I'll just hand it to somebody and keep walking. And just people are like tripping out. Like, who is this guy? What's he doing? But it makes my life fun. I don't know how it's landing for that person. I don't know. The person probably gets it at the gas station and gets mad because, you know, they tried to put their credit. I don't know. But for me, it's fun because it makes my life about mission and it takes me out 
of my loneliness. It could be as easy as calling somebody, Zooming somebody, uh, texting somebody. I like to be intentional once a week to sit down and say, God, put five to 10 people on my heart right now that need a little touch from heaven and I'll reach out thinking about you, love you, praying for you, and that's it. It doesn't take a lot of effort whatsoever. Uh, This week, I I had a guy that um, I was connected with over the summer that pastors a church in Compton, California. And we've been emailing back and forth, trying to figure out a way to, um, to connect. And then finally, he sends me an email. and is like, hey, I've got availability this week. And so I happened to have time on Thursday. And I went to Compton, saw his church. They were doing all kinds of great things. I met a lady named Jackie that just started taking groceries that people would deliver to her. And she, from her front yard, she would start giving away to anybody that would come by. She put it on like the next door app. And now I saw it in action on Thursday. There were probably 200 cars coming in through the church parking lot with Jackie's food grocery ministry giveaway. And I was like, what in the world? But it all started with one woman named Jackie that said, I want to make a difference and I want to live my life on mission. And it completely was a, a not just a blessing for Jackie, but gosh, that the whole neighborhood uh, is uh, is changed now. And I can't wait. We're uh, Pastor Rafer, I think, is going to be with us in a few weeks to share. But uh, God's doing some really cool things uh, with our our church partnership uh, with uh, Faith Inspirational Church in Compton. But with all that said, I'm out of time. But I, I want to especially talk to you guys that have been feeling punched in the face lately with loneliness. That I believe that God put it on my heart specifically to talk about this subject because he wants to put a fight back into you to fight back against the loneliness that is trying to push you around. That you have the same God that raised Jesus Christ, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, God living on the inside of you. So you don't have to take this bully of loneliness trying to end your life, trying to completely deplete you and get you to hide out in your room. Somebody watching right now, you have been contemplating taking your life because the loneliness is so dark. I am here to declare life over you. I'm here to declare a a, a life-giving spirit over you that God has so much more for you and that your best is yet to come. And I want to pray for anybody that is watching right now that you've been struggling with loneliness, maybe even having thoughts of taking your life, and I'm going to pray this prayer over you. Father, you, you see the hearts that are hurting today that have just been beat up by the spirit of loneliness. God, I pray that you would replace that spirit of loneliness with the spirit of life and hope and peace. And God, that you would change the narrative of their life. And Lord, replace it with just an overflowing spirit and and resilience to want to keep going on. So help them, God, right now. I pray that that spirit of loneliness the the spirit of suicide, every dark, foul spirit that's trying to come against my brother and sister. In Jesus' name, we come against you and we bind you in the name of Jesus. God, if anybody is watching right now that hasn't surrendered their life to you, God, I pray that they would make that decision to surrender their life and to follow you, Jesus, to receive your Holy Spirit inside of their bodies. In Jesus' name. And if you're praying, maybe you're, you're trying to think about what God is speaking to you about these three things that I, I told you about, about getting a loan, getting a crew, or getting a mission. Those of you that may have not yet made a decision to follow Jesus, I want to encourage you, make that decision today. And it's so simple. All you do is pray this prayer. You, you could pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Thank you for dying for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit for today. I'm a Christian and I'm gonna follow you, Jesus, all the days of my life in Jesus' name, amen. That's as simple as it is. And if you just prayed that prayer for the first time, 
I believe that you saying yes to Jesus is a game changer, not just for this life, but your life to come. So let us know you made that decision. Text the Atmos phone on 805-807-9444 and we want to send you a Bible and other resources that are going to help you grow in your faith and achieve everything that God wants to do with your life because I really do believe that following Jesus is going to make your life better and it's going to make you better at life. So with that in mind, let's worship the Lord and let's celebrate the advent of God coming to be with us. Let's worship. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be a part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.